So I'm sitting in my car in the beaches down a little street. So hopefully it's not. It's pretty cute. Well, I hope mm. you guys can hear me okay because I um, put my earphones through a paper shredder this week. So. Oh no, you did not. <laughs> Guess what? They can shred. Um, well, yeah. Literally, you paper learned shredder? That. huh? You learned that. You learned that the hard way. I have a paper shredder beside my desk, and I went to shred something, and I just hit my. It's just the Apple yeah. ones. They're, I mean, it's not great. It's twenty five bucks though, but whatever. Um, yeah, and they just fell, and they just like sucked right in, and I was like. It, I'm honestly like the, you know, like a paper shredder, like the thing is like this big, right? It, like it's like fluke. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> so I don't have earphones. No. They fit. They yeah. fit well, I mean, the, 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 the bud part didn't, but the yeah, the wire just went right through. Lovely. Oh wow. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Horse things. Well, yeah, I mean, my husband, my husband Brett told me there's like a trend on TikTok with the youths. That like when things like that happen, it's like preventing you from something worse happen. Like that's what the the kids believe. Like okay. his example was like, well, the air the AirPods maybe would have short circuited and zapped you. So like the universe sucked them. Through. Like that's the the the, what the kids on TikTok believe now when bad things happen, it's present preventing mm. them from something worse. Wow. All right. Wow. It's such a positive okay. positive group. <laughs> All right. I do think I do think like so I wear Bluetooth headphones yeah. everywhere and um. There have been a few moments like so I remember dropping mine in the toilet, right? Like I wasn't on the toilet. I happened to be in the washroom mm -hmm. and I reached over to grab something. It literally went boom. And then I was like looking at it going, hmm. I could rescue it. They're waterproof. I could yeah. rescue it. But will I ever put that thing back in my ear ever again? Right? Like yeah. <laughs> So at least you are got to make decisions. You know, so the decisions made for you, right? It ain't coming back. It's never going to, you know, function again. Mine was like, I need to have the willpower to go in and reach it out and fish it out and then decide whether. <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's my gosh. Take oh, my gosh. All good. Your AirPods. Your AirPods. Penny, um, what's that? I thought, you, you have coffee? We got. We gave you enough time. To I yeah. yeah, it's funny. I woke up about ten minutes before that we were supposed to start. <laughs> Great. Excellent. Just enough time to get coffee. That was yeah. it. Enough time to hit the hit the button on the machine and make myself a nice cup of coffee. I'm I'm good to go. To go. Excellent. To go. Excellent. So to go. I thought what we do is record a little because you guys have put out some stuff and I just think nobody's paying attention. Maybe people are. Right. So, but my like, yeah, I read the report. Yeah, I read the report and thought, you guys are fucking on it. Yeah, um, it's really, really well done. Like, it's fucking on it. And then, I just think also, <clears throat> the part that probably nobody will appreciate is how you guys have taken into account that it's not um, kind of one dimensional that way. So it's not just about like hey, the color blue is going to be super hot this year. You guys should be all over it. I think the mindsets and um, is that what you called it? The mindsets? I I mess with names a lot, but kind of the mentality of how to think about these kind of um, groupings, I thought was really interesting, um, which I really loved. So thank you. Well, I think yeah. um, a little bit of it was born because like the group going back to TikTok and that conversation, like things yeah. are too, like there it's it's nuts right now like things are trending at a speed i don't think any of us have ever seen before so like keeping up with that is unsustainable it's going to burn you out and i mean unless you already have something in market that can catch that wave and kind of you know capitalize off of it like great good for you but you can't innovate with that kind of cycle so it is really taking a step back and, and thinking about what's happening in the world and like there's some pretty big and heavy things happening in the world. And that is shaping how we think, how we view the world, yeah. and the products, yeah. the brands, the yeah. stores, whatever that is you choose to interact with. Like it, it is having an impact on all of us. So I think it was really important to, yeah, to take that step back. And I also think too, getting outside of your, kind of your bubble of your industry and like thinking about what's happening is, is really important to, to view your customer lens with which they are seeing the world they're not just like in it like we are right so yeah 
Yeah, I thought it was well done for that reason too. And I think there's a difference between like I, I when I said when I think TikTok and all that, I think fad. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tight. If you try to chase a fad, by the time you get to it, it's already moved. Mm -hmm. So I think finding sort of the, the larger trend is what I, what I really liked. I thought, okay, so you can use this because you probably got time on your side. Like I mean, you want to get in as quick as you can without screwing up your whole world and going off plan. Mm -hmm. But you can catch, you know, a, a wave that typically should run for a while. Like I can't do this week, you know, where we're, you know, we're gonna have, you know, you just started this week. We're gonna start showing people doing ear earbuds, puds into or into what do you call it, a shredder. Mm -hmm. You know, that'll last a week. How do you follow that trend? Yeah, because it's not a trend, it's a fad. I mean, it's ten seconds, and then you're done. So I loved yeah. what you guys did because I was like, thought, look at this. This is really well thought out. This is. This is pretty cool. Like your membership should all be reading it. I'm not convinced they're all reading it either. And I <laughs> think they should be reading it. Yes, everyone should read it. <laughs> I should be a, a, right? a, a lot of love and a lot of work went into it. So I'm glad you guys sure. saw the value. So, so this is a good segue is um, if you're tuning in, we're doing a fast thought with Lindsay Walker. Um, she is the head of marketing at CHFA. And um, this little recording is because um, Kenny and I were perusing the CHFA site. Um, we were looking, we were, we were looking for, for insight. Um, I was looking for some stuff I wanted to be able to share with students and teach them new things. And we saw, um, we saw this beautifully put together um, research piece and, and article on you know, how to think about trends for 2024. Um, uh, got put out in November. If any of you have had anything like the November that Kenny and I had, and I'm pretty sure Lindsay had, is we, I think we're all traveling a million miles a minute until we hit the wall at the end of 2023. Mm -hmm. And then we all kind of like just climbed over the wall, flopped down and, and tried to take a nap before we started 2024 is probably the analogy I've got. Um, and so we saw this thing and I think I was shouting at Lindsay as like over email, not badly, just, but it's super excited. I was literally like, oh my God, this thing that you and your team have built. And, um, you know, so we thought we'd get her on and talk about it. Um, if you are a CHFA member, you should definitely go and read this thing. Um, they have put together a, a really thoughtful, um, well done piece on how to think about 2024 and the trends that come. Um, I'll shut up there because uh, that's probably about as smart as I get. But Lindsay, that was like great. Thing, uh, I just think I just think because it's not. Um, we, I said it at the beginning, but um, you know, it's not a. It's really common at this time of year to get content that's like top ten things you should think about, like plaid is in this year and blue is in this year and. You know, but you guys went at it from um, kind of like a couple of different angles so that people could think about, like, you know, how to think about trends and then what the trends were. So I thought uh, both of those were really thoughtful ways to be able to put this together. Thank you. Yeah. And I mean, distilling it down to like blue is in or plaid is in, like those are important too. There's a very famous scene in Devil Wears Prada with like the cerulean yes. sweater she's wearing, yeah, right. right? And like all yes. those steps yeah. to, to get to that yes. blue, and, yeah. and that's kind of you can come at it two ways like you know you want to meet people where they're yeah. you know their, their eyes are looking for color palettes or or specific ingredients but that work does take a lot of time to get there so that's where yeah to your point that's how we wanted to approach it thinking through all of the things that are impacting us as a human collective right now and you know trying yeah. to trying to frame out for our members, you know, how this could play out in the future. I mean, we don't have a crystal ball, but here's some some early adopters and some things we're seeing right now. And then, you know, what what does that future state look like and, and how you can start to incorporate these things, whether you're on the brand through your product innovation or your brand aesthetic, your brand strategy, or as a retailer, like how you can merchandise in store as well. So yeah, some 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 good some good framing in there to give some ideas as well. Yeah, we really exceptional we, frame, and I think yeah. it's like all of this. I, I think again, I think it becomes like what you got to try to do, even as a retailer or anybody in this industry, is just watch the fads versus the trend. And then there's micro trends and sort of macro trends. Like macro trends was a book that was written years ago, and it mm -hmm. talked about those higher level trends, like rewilding 
is not a fad mm -hmm. and it's not a micro trend. It is, a, it is a trend that's been happening for a while. So knowing that and knowing what it means and trying to go back to that, I think you can ride that wave probably for a few years. It'll reiterate, but the underlying theme and feel of it will hold for more than six months. Yeah. That's yeah. what you're trying to catch. Like otherwise you're going to change your business. You can't change packaging every three days. You can't change your business model every week. No. But you should see what's coming and get a feel. Say, wow, I think this actually got some legs. How does it play? That that was a test, by the way. Is if you read it, you would know what rewilding is. You would. And if you didn't read it, you should read it because maybe, then you read rewilding. You'll never know what rewilding is until you read it. Or you sign up to see your face so you can read it. You might get a tiny bit in the snippet in the demo, but or in the yeah, sample. I think, probably, but. I think you get rewilding in the Same. sample, but it's also too like I think it's really important if you want to stay ahead of things as well, is challenging yourself to make the connections. And that's one of the things we tried to outline in the report as well, is how do these certain things that people are thinking about, like rewilding, how would that connect into something like diversity, equity, and inclusion, for example, or cultural wisdom, like they, things don't live in isolation either. No. So starting to really force yourself to make connections. And that's one of the things when we were doing the work mm -hmm. for this, like the rewilding concept, it's not new. You've, we've heard it in um, uh, like pollinator gardens and things like that for quite a while, but now you're kind of starting to see that same premise show up in beauty as well. And people thinking about the concept of rewilding on their skin or in their guts. And so again, you can see how that trickles into something closer to our industry like we're not really i think we're advocates of the en environmentalist movement and probably all love pollinator gardens but like that's not really one of our member companies per se so you know starting to think how this concept mm -hmm. can come come into our world and how that shows up for people i think is really <clears throat> cool. no i totally agree uh, i love it um totally so if you haven't read it you should read it um if you aren't a member of CHFA, um, you can go and get um, you can go and get a smaller snippet of it. Um, it'll be useful, but it's probably easier for you to um, Lindsay didn't ask us to do this. We just love these guys. So the plug yeah. is you should really sign up and just be members because um, these guys are always putting out some pretty the amount of stuff you get out of this yeah. organization. Because again, you're on. So yeah, we'll, we'll push you a little bit. But it's also because I don't care if you're on. I push you if you weren't on. Thank you. Right. I think it's worth it's worth a look. It's not it's not brutally expensive. It is an organization that you'll be able to talk to a whole bunch of peers. You get to see a lot of things. There's just a lot of really cool information. I've never seen like there's not many organizations that put out this much content that's actually mm -hmm. useful. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not, you know, yeah. it's just good stuff. Like you should be proud, honestly, Lindsay, you guys should be yeah. really proud of this one. This one yeah. was really, really well done. I mean, you do lots of great stuff anyway. Can this one in, in particular was really, really well done. I, I want to add one more piece here is we're at the beginning of a year that um, is as tough as last year was, right? So there are households changing the way they, the way they buy, the way they yeah. think about products and their behaviors in store. And I think um, a piece that Lindsay and Aaron talked about last year in the spring um, at CHFA West uh, around how to think about, you know, kind of inflationary times and then the, the different product categories that are going to suffer from this. Um, you know, while I was in there and I was reading stuff, I, I actually went back to look at it and it, a lot of it is quite relevant. So if you're feeling, um, if you're feeling a little bit lost because you're at the end of January and we've just, I don't know about you guys, but I rolled into the year and when I rolled into the year, everybody else was sprinting around me. So I felt <laughs> so I had to like move, start to move a lot faster than I was planning on moving. And so if you're at the end of January and you're kind of worried about like, I haven't had a chance to catch up, but I feel like everything's wrong. Um, that is also a really good um, piece of research to have under your belt. Because as I looked at the categories that you guys were reviewing last year, they hold right now, like all of them are coming true in the marketplace right now. So I, I just feel like, um, Sadly enough, they're, but they're yeah. coming true. And so it's kind of a really relevant piece of uh, material to be having at your side right now. Yeah. I mean, when we did that study, like it was so topical last year, but I mean, I think we all kind of hoped by this point, um, inflation would have cooled a little bit more. And, you know, we want to make um, reports that that have longevity for our members. But that one, I think particularly just is 
people who have to spend their hard earned dollars, I think we all kind of hope that one would would cool a little. But yeah, yeah still still relevant, yeah. and there's lots of categories. And I mean, I think that's also how we've approached our um, our research strategy is making sure that there is kind of multi categories covered because our membership is so diverse. We don't want to just deep dive into one section, at least not not yet. We want to make sure that we're providing value to as many people. So there's NHPs, our natural health products, food, beverage, all in that report as well. So you can all get something out of it. So yeah, it's a really good one as well. Awesome. Um, thanks for doing that. Thanks that for awesome. having me. I love talking to you guys all the time. It's a good way to spend awesome. a Friday. Oh my gosh, Friday morning. Friday morning with Lindsay. We love it. Friday love morning. It. We're almost Friday there. Morning.